Oh no, the computer's on fire. It's okay, it's only a Mac. Hey guys, we're going to look at email and online threats. Now, this is something that you're going to come across pretty much all the time if you're working online. And this is a new world. Maybe not so new, but I mean, there are things here that are just, are just crazy. Let's have a look, okay? So, email and online threats. First, we are going to... Um, meet up with things called uh, viruses. Now, I'm not talking about uh, biological viruses that we get sick from. I mean computer viruses. Like, did you know your computer can actually get a virus? And it's not good if your computer has a virus. Why? This is why. A computer virus is basically this. An application that has been created to disrupt the functioning of your device and or cause it to fail or malfunction. Sometimes also to gather personal information from your device. So the whole point of a virus is as a program, the program has to run, it has to be executed, okay, it has to run, and then it is made to make your device malfunction or shut it down completely or to gather information. So let's have a look at a couple of viruses that we know about. The type of virus here is called a Trojan virus. Now, a Trojan virus is based on the, the story of the Trojan horse. Now, I can't remember it so well. Persians or somebody, I don't know. Somebody wanted to get into a city and the city had big walls and it was very difficult to get in. So they built this huge wooden horse and they left it at the gate as a present uh, for the king or whoever uh, was in charge. And uh, the people in the city thought, oh, that is such a cool horse. Bring it on in. Meanwhile, inside the horse were all the soldiers that were hiding. And uh, in the middle of the night, all the soldiers then climbed out of the horse and defeated the city from inside. So that is kind of what a Trojan virus does. It's disguised as a useful, a useful or a legitimate application, uh, and it triggers at a certain date and time or when certain conditions are met. And then it pretty much kills your computer. So it looks like it could be a cool screensaver, and it probably is a cool screensaver, but it's also got the soldiers hidden inside, waiting for the right moment to take over your machine. So please, yeah, we're gonna use, talk about how we've sorted that out later. Okay, worms. Yes, it's not only your dog or cat that gets worms, your computer can get worms as well. How? Well, a worm is a virus, a program, okay, an application that basically just keeps replicating itself. It keeps replicating, uh, duplicating, like making copies of itself over and over and over again. And the whole purpose is that it starts to use up the RAM on your computer and the CPU processor, all right, the central processing unit processor that's what I said uh, and I meant it and uh, it just keeps taking up more and more RAM until your poor computer is so busy and trying to process the stuff and it just freezes up and it just hangs and dies okay that's what a that's what a worm basically wants to do to your computer it's horrible hoaxes although these are not viruses these are things that you're gonna come across in your online dealings with the, the world. And a hoax is basically just stories that are not true. There are no facts, there's no substance, and people just keep forwarding them on and say, you know what, I heard about this thing that happened and this person did this, and, and it's just crazy stuff that you go like, man, I don't know if that's true. If, if it's not true, okay, you will find out very quickly. All right, go to uh, truthorfiction.com, hoaxslayers.com. All right, those are two websites that I know of, which will very um, quickly help you identify if what you uh, have received is in fact true or false. So that's hoaxslayers.com and truthorfiction.com. Another thing that just is it just proliferates uh, all around the world. It's probably the bulk of what we get in our email, and that's called spam. Spam is just literally unwanted, unsolicited email. It's often for products or fake jobs. It's got loads of clickbait in. It's, uh, yeah, it's made for you, it just wastes your time. It's got absolutely no value whatsoever. So how do we sort this out? Most uh, email clients have got spam filtering already built in. Most ISPs that you're getting your email through already filter a lot of that out. So sometimes things do get through, but on the whole, there's a spam folder or a junk mail folder. And um, yeah, most things just go in there. So that's actually pretty good. 
Fishing, fishing. Now this is P H I S H I N G, not fishing like normal fishing. Okay, for fish, fishing is when you get an email that pretends to be from someone or something that you know, but it's asking you to enter in some private information, such as a pin code or a password or something or user ID, and that is the whole point is to get information or to get you to give them information, and that's what phishing is all about, and that's very very dangerous because the moment you give somebody your information like pin codes and passwords and usernames they've got access to all your stuff that's a bad thing moving on from fishing we move into whaling believe it or not yes whaling is it's kind of like fishing but on a larger scale it's the same sort of principle the email comes from somebody pretending to be a known source within your company or your business but it's aimed at like the big bosses all right the, the guys who make the big money, the big bucks, because that's what this is all about. It's just about money. So uh, same thing, trying to get people to sh share their passwords or their usernames, their information, user IDs, access to bank accounts, all that sort of stuff. But with whaling, we're going for the big fish, hence the big fish, whaling, bosses, etc. in a company. Now, spear phishing, all this phishing, okay, all of this is basically just to get information from someone. So spear phishing starts off within the company. Somebody looks for social media accounts of someone. They then target that person pretending to be someone that the other person knows. And then they create fake email addresses, fake messages. They send them an attachment of some kind, which is normally uh, the virus, okay, or the program that they're going to use. The person opens this program because they think they know who's sending them this email and the virus then kicks in and starts giving access to the network and private information that might be very poorly protected on the network. So that's what spear phishing is about. And spear phishing is very specific, targeting an individual specifically to try and get to somebody else within a business. This is a very interesting one because I get this a lot. And that's, in fact, on the screen, that is from my own computer. That's a screenshot. I get emails from banks, okay? And now you can see already the logo looks very familiar, but something's not quite right about that logo. Have a look. And I get emails from banks all the time saying, oh, you know, your account has been hacked or someone's just deposited like tens of thousands of rands into your account and you're rich but you just have to click this link have a look at the link okay when you put your mouse over it and you see in the status bar of your web browser have a look at that link that is not an official bank link right there i mean that's taking me somewhere in russia definitely not my bank and I don't even have an account with this bank, so something is definitely up. So spoofing, it looks like an email from a legitimate source, but it actually redirects to a fake site, which looks like the real site. They're getting very good at that, and it tries to get you to enter in your details. And it has actually happened to me once. I'm sorry, I have to admit, a little while ago, I, I really was duped. It looked legit. And I entered in my details and boy oh boy did I learn about that the hard way. Do not do that guys. Okay, farming. So from fishing to farming, again, PH. And farming basically is this, all right? Uh, I'll read it to you. Fraudsters hijack a website's domain name and then use, read, and use it to redirect visitors to an imposter site. So you think you're going to google.com but your web browser actually takes google.com and then the virus redirects that to like go0gle.com, for example. And it might even look like google.com, but there's just going to be ads all over the place or they're, they're trying to get you to type in something to fix your computer or fake virus alerts and things like that. So that's what farming is all about. It's about basically gathering people and redirecting them to different sites instead. The bottom line of all of this, guys, is just it's to make money. Now, this is a scary one and still very, very real. Ransomware. Now, the word ransom, when you hold somebody to ransom, it means you hold all the goods until they pay you, then you release the goods. All right. So ransomware is very dangerous. This is what it does. It encrypts one's entire hard drive rendering it inaccessible unless money is paid for the hacker to unlock it again. 
So what could happen is if you get ransomware on your computer and you go and um, launch it and it locks down your entire system, encrypts your hard drive, you no longer have access. You get a message on your screen. It says, we've locked your computer. Here are our details. If you want us to unlock your computer, you pay us this much. Often it's in Bitcoin, believe it or not. So all of these things, the viruses, the applications that launch themselves on your computer or that you un unknowingly launch on your computer, they fall under a general umbrella or a term called malware. Malware. And that means you have to protect yourself or get this guy to protect you. Okay. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. So how do we protect ourselves? Well, the first step is using legitimate anti virus software antivirus software there's a couple of examples over there and you may have well got some of them on your computer already try that that's the first step in protecting yourself using antivirus software also don't go and click on stuff okay I'll show you that in the next slide but um, what I recommend actually for myself this is what I use I don't use antivirus software um, I don't go on sites I shouldn't go on in terms of bad software and stuff like that I use just the built-in Windows Defender Windows Defender comes as part of Windows 10, and it's actually a very good uh, antivirus and mal anti malware uh, program. Give it a try. It is on your computer. Make sure it's up to date, make sure it's running, and you'll see it's actually very, very good. So, how else can we protect ourselves? Well, first step is uh, don't open attachments that are emailed to you. If someone sends you an attachment, if it's got like a .com or a .bat, B-A-T, .exe, something like that, in fact, any sort of attack, even a .html, guys, don't go and open the thing. Uh, if you do trust the person, which you shouldn't, download the file and scan it first with a proper program or anti-malware software of some kind, but rather don't open up any attachments that are sent to you. Number two, don't go and broadcast your whole name and all your private details to the world, okay? Don't put all your stuff online so people know exactly who you are, what you do, who all your friends are, um, and then they can start targeting you with all this information that you've given them. That's a bad idea. Number three, don't just click on anything and links and open up stuff online while browsing the internet. If a Windows pops pops up and it says, you've won a million bucks, do you really think you've won a million bucks? Okay, or you've got a virus, you must scan your computer right now, click this link. If you're being asked to click on a link or something, that's more than likely the virus. So please, be careful being online, look after yourself and your devices, protect yourself with knowledge, please.